Hey everybody, Randy here in the Eastwood Garage with another live video on Facebook, YouTube, and at Eastwood.com. Then I'm here with Matt, who's going to help demonstrate our bead roller and the bead roller forming dies. If you have any questions, as always, Scott's over here, everybody's favorite lead tech in my favorite shirt. <laughs> and uh, Scott, what's going on? Yeah, not too much. Just make sure you guys, you know, any questions you have, get them on here. I can get them taken care of. I can shoot them over to Matt and, uh, and Randy. And also this month, make sure you go to our website, the Contour SCT. We're giving one away. Uh, there's a link right on the main page. So all you have to do is go ahead and click on that link. You can enter in and maybe these, one of these could be yours. So. And we're giving it away this month. So you have to yep. enter by March 31st. Yeah, you have till the end of, uh, end of it, exactly. The, yeah, end good. of the month. End of the month, yeah. I was going to say the <laughs> date, but never mind. I got it. I, I, I got it. So if you have any Transit. questions, post them as a comment on Facebook or YouTube, and Scott will answer them. We'll throw them over to us. So today, what we got going is the Eastwood Bead Roller. Um, it's got a 17-inch throat. It's going to do metal up to 34 inches. And uh, it comes with some bead roller dies. This set, over <laughs> this set of bead roller dies over here is what it comes with. Uh, you get 10 dies that's going to... That's going to allow you to roll beads or uh, put flanges of metal. Stuff that's uh, uh, great for doing uh, floor pans especially. But what we really want to talk about are these forming dies right here, which are going to allow you to do hemmed edges. It's going to allow you to put um, some shapes, contours, and some other cool stuff. So Matt's going to demonstrate and show us, give us some tips and show us some of the stuff we can make. So what are we doing first here? Uh, yeah, so I think first what we're going to show you guys is how to... Uh, if to recreate the, um, like if you have a floor pan or side of a bed of a vehicle that has kind of a press look to it, uh, you know, that would have been stamped originally into a panel, but with, by using these, uh, these offset dies here, uh, we can actually uh, lay out our panel and run the panel in a manner in which we can recreate that. So we're gonna show you uh, the same thing. Stuff uh, you can't you do with a typical um, yeah, normal bead roller, bead roller dies. dies, you cannot. Um, this set right here, I'll let you do that. Uh, any configuration here. So these, uh, you can separate these dies here. I don't know if Joe, you can get in close to show just the dies themselves. Um, but we can offset these dies to change how much of a step is in the, is in the mm -hmm. panel. There's extra room here uh, on the shafts that we can change the offset of these and actually create a, a, a more gentle um, step in the panel or change the angle of the step. So right now I have them tight together um, so that they have a, it'll have a pretty uh, steep step to them. And these dies will fit um, a bead roller with a 7 8 or 22 millimeter shaft. Yeah, so. any, any of the similar looking uh, bead rollers that have been out for a long time. So Are you ready? I think so. Yeah, go ahead. So we have the, the uh, just light pressure um, on this. So you notice I didn't use a wrench to even tighten that down. We just let a little bit of slack in it in the panel. And then the material thickness actually, go ahead, you're good, creates the, um, creates the, the depth of the, of the steps. So you don't want to tighten them down too tight, like I kind of forgot to when we were testing earlier today, <laughs> or it'll make it really difficult to crank and it'll also distort the panel some because you're just trying to move too, too much material in one shot. So I'll show you guys the slack in the panel or in the, uh, in the dies. So there's the first one done. Some guys may have uh, got to do this at our store too. Yeah, we, we had, demo yeah, we had a de demo station. If you've been to our retail stores where you can do kind of the same type of thing. Um, and if you've ever used these, post it as a comment. Let us know how you liked them. Let everybody else know. And here you can see this is the slack that I actually have set up in the bead roller. So I don't have it cranked down tight. Um, if we had it cranked down tight, it'll, it'll too tight. It'll be too much material to move in one shot. So we have about that much play in it, but when we run it through, it'll create that. So I'm going to flip this around, around this way this time. All right. All right. Yep. So I notice you're using the Murray squint here. Yeah, that's been my, <laughs> my patented squint. I don't know why I do that, but apparently my left eye is well, You are left-handed, right? Yeah. I don't know why. Helps me focus. I need to wear a, a pat. Maybe I'll wear a patch over my eye. I'm like a pirate when I do this. 
I, I would go, I would, yeah. We'll do a pirate themed episode one of these times. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Arr. Yeah, we need Walk a ratings in. grab. Walk in the plank. Down the bead roll or die. All right. Yeah. We usually try to slow up around the bends. It's a bead roller's life for me. You got to pass the time when you're rolling beads, though. Yep. So there we go. We got a nice uh, pressed. There we go. Yeah, look at that. So a nice crisp line. Again, I, I put the bead roller dies so that the, the steps are almost touching. And what that does, that gives you that real steep, sharp bend like that. Um, if you want something that's a little more gentle, uh, we could separate these and, and open up the gap a little bit and that would create more of a gentle step. There we go. So you guys oh, can see is how much we've dropped the center in there. So depending on what you're doing, you can flip the panel either way. So if you want the design to be down like it's pressed in, uh, you could do that. So if you're doing floor pans or something like that where you don't want a raised profile in it, you would set it like this. If we were doing like say, you know, sometimes on the exterior of a vehicle like a bedside or something may be pressed the other way, um, but you can see how much this is raised out here. And you can see a design I drew the way before we went. Is that another design on here? That was the one we decided to not do it in the center. There we go. <laughs> a little bit of pre will make that disappear. But yeah, the cool thing is you can just see how sharp you can get with that. It's really defined, comes well, out pretty nice. Before we, we're going to switch up and do the dash, but before we'll, we'll go over here to Scott and see if Scott has any questions. Sure, um, a couple questions. Uh, first one is, is it possible to start in the middle of the panel? Uh, yeah, it is possible. Basically, the only difference would be that we would have to loosen this nut up um, and slide the panel in and then crank it down tight. And that's where you'll actually have to um, count the number of turns that you're doing on the adjustment screw here, just like you would do when you're using a normal beading die. Um, it's the same process. So yes, yeah, so you can start in the middle of the panel, no problem, or you know, generally you are, you're not running off the edge like that. So most times you're gonna be starting somewhere, you crank it down um, and you would count your turns. Sure, and the other one is uh, Cummins for Life asks, is there a process of Less is more, or is it the other way around when he's talking about adding strength with it? Yeah. Uh, well, the thing you'll come across is that uh, if you start adding too many beads or too much bead work in too tight of an area, it's pulling too much metal and it'll distort your panel. Um, so when you plan out your beads, uh, you're just trying to make the panel stronger. You don't necessarily need to put a ton of lines or shapes in there, unless you're trying to do you know, an art type thing where you're making a design uh, you may do that, but in those cases when you're seeing guys doing, you know, like a face or some kind of crazy artistic thing, they're actually using a real thin uh, die with the rubber wheel here, and they're putting barely any pressure on it. Mm -hmm. It's almost like what we do in the first pass to just score a line, that's all they're doing. So it's not actually moving much material then. So, um, yeah, you don't need to put a lot in there. A little tip you can do if you are putting a little bit of um, additional beads in a panel where you're afraid of it warping, leave a lot of extra material. It won't pull as hard because it'll give it, it'll kind of lock it in a little easier. And we have a cool video on pre-stretching we did a little while ago. Yeah, a couple months ago. Uh, using the English wheel and if you guys look up on our YouTube channel you can see that. So. Anything else Scott? We're good for the time being so it looks right. like he's just about changed out and we're ready to roll. And if you have any questions again you can post them as a comment. Scott will take care of you, throw them to us. So uh, our bead roller here if you're not familiar with it, you can do pieces up to 34 inches since it has a 17 inch throat. So basically any kind of floor pans or anything like that will handle easily. And it's going to do a steel or aluminum up to 18 gauge. And over here are, you get um, six sets of dies, which you get bead roller dies that match up. We can get in here. And um, flanging. So, you know, a lot of stuff you're going to use for floor pans. So you can roll a flange on the side so your sheet metal lays nicely in it, or roll the beads for strength. But we're gonna show you, what we've shown you today is our forming dies, which are more than for the typical rolling beads for strength. You can actually make, and right here they are, there's 10 of them, including this, um, this wheel, which we'll be showing you how to use. So we just did a little design here, but you can see some of these other shapes we have, trans, uh, so you know, beyond thinking, this is basically to show you like, 
Um, beyond using a bead roller just for beads for floor pans, some of the stuff you can make, like a trans tunnel. If you want to do uh, fender arch, fender yeah. flares, arches. I mean, even if it's just a patch in a fender where a lot yep. of stuff uh, rusts out, you know, you can use these dies. So you really expand um, the abilities of a simple bead roller. Or what we're going to do now is if you have a dash insert or any kind of shape like this, uh, you'll actually be able to do it. Let's show them real quick before we do. Uh, um, we'll show you guys just before we get into something a little, like uh, a little higher end. We'll just show you just a simple what you can do with this if you get. Um, we have the different dies for the top um, that have different widths. Uh, I was looking for this one. one. So depending on what you're looking to do, um, as far as the shape of the bend or or line that you're putting in the panel with the with a soft lower wheel. Uh, we have all different sizes. I have the intermediate one here. So I'll show you just tipping an edge on this. So with this one, what we're going to do is we tighten it down. So you tighten it down basically so there's no slack. It's just snug. And then again, the, the, uh, the thickness of the material will actually dictate um, you know, what's happening. And because it's a softer lower wheel, it will kind of dig in a little bit and allow you to do that. So I want to show you, you can tip an edge. So if you're just doing a, a bent edge on a panel. Um, I just freehanded a line there and we'll just roll this through. And the top um, die is going to actually dictate the shape of this rolled edge. So if we use the sharper one, we're going to get a nice sharp radius. Um, and I'll run it, through, we'll run it through one more time. So each time you're going to push up a little more as you go. And you're kind of rolling it around that top wheel. So um, the larger diameter roll you're going to do. But what this does, see this one produces a nice rounded, uh, there we go, nice rounded line that you set there. So you're, so you're breaking that edge there, but it's rounded. So if you wanted a sharp line, you could use the, the die that's more squared off and is more narrow, and that's going to give you more of a broken edge like you would see um, with just a normal break. Uh, but this mean, but versus a break, you can do something that's curved. The line yeah. is curved, kind of like we have here. So, um, if you plan out your panel correctly, you can this, actually move metal in. Yeah, because this is actually what I was going to do to make a rocker panel. Because this oh, yeah. is kind of what you're going to show is you put an arc, and you know, rocker panels a lot of times front to back have a have a little yeah, bit of an yeah. arc. And so my original plan was was to imitate that. Yeah. But then I started realizing I had other shapes, so I used a shrinker stretcher. Yeah. But, it, but if, if I was just doing a small, a small patch and you have to match that, these bead roller forming dies, because you can, because you know, a lot of guys it. don't yeah. have that, or if you don't have a shrinker stretcher, you can actually do some of that you know, with these forming dies. Yep, yeah, so we shape. have a, it's all in the, in the line that you draw and the, and the angle that you follow. So if you put a, an arc, I'm trying to get rid of, there we go, get rid of the glare. So we put an arc in the panel, and then I have a, the same thing in the back side. Um, and what we're actually going to do, it's going to end up, because of the, the way we, we drew this and the way we're bending it, we can actually make this move metal in two different directions, uh, which we're going to show you. So I have, to, I have it set up just the same in the... Uh... We good? Yep. All right. So again, I'm just kind of just scoring the line here. We're not... I'm not pushing up real hard. So this first pass, you're just kind of setting the line in the panel and then as we do the other passes we'll we'll follow that line it'll kind of want to follow the train track almost so your first one's pretty important to make sure you get on that line and if you got if you want to see more we do have uh, a few videos on the bead roller and the forming dies on our YouTube channel or if you just want to get any of this at eastwood.com. Any questions, Scott? Uh, yeah, I have a good one. Uh, how much do you charge uh, per hour for your cranking? <laughs> <laughs> That's been asked. I don't think the, he's going to uh, talk yeah. about his salary on. I was yeah. going to say. <laughs> I didn't know if Matt was, if you were billing Matt for that. But well, now, somebody that obviously knows that you're only as good as your cranker yeah. handle, man. Yeah, it's, exactly. Yeah, it's, been said, oh, but it's been said over and over, but you really can't say it enough. <laughs> now, on a serious note, though, someone did ask. Uh, I was you know, serious. If you'd be able to uh, use this to write, roll a bead on the edge of uh, intercooler piping. Um, I was just actually talking about somebody with that. Uh, if you have a large enough diameter 
pipe that could fit in this and you use a real, you use like the tightest die. Um, what I would probably do is, I'd probably actually go to one of our bead dies, our smallest one here, and uh, use one of our smallest bead dies, the male and female side. We actually had someone here who did just that. James did it. He built one for uh, a replacement section. Yeah, so um, you can use this. And really the most difficult part is how you grab the tubing to spin it, you know, to, to hold it and spin it. Um, it, it's kind of difficult. So, but, uh, but otherwise, because uh, if you're just spinning the wheel, it's just going to yeah. go in one spot. So you got to grab it and kind of help it. Moving. So it's possible. Mm. Yeah, it's just not, uh, it's not super easy. We do sell a, a, a higher end tool if they're looking to do production work right, on the website, it. but it's obviously a little more pricey. About five times the price. Yeah, but if you're doing it over and over again. So we got the line set. So now I can kind of start tipping a little harder here with my pressure. Um, and what'll happen is... And you are using, hand, this isn't just the dies forming it like a typical bead roller. This is, you're actually putting upwards pressure. Yeah, yeah. Each time we're putting a little bit of upward pressure. You don't want to try and do it all in one shot because what'll happen is it'll actually slip out from the rubber wheel if you try and do too much at, a, at one shot. And you want to kind of gradually get it to to go into that shape we're looking for. And like I said, since we already kind of scored a line in here, I don't have to watch it quite as much because um, it's going to kind of want to follow that, that line there. So we got another one coming there. So it's starting to come in. We got our shape. So now that we got this kind of run, I can change my position here. Um, there you go. That good. So I'm going to change my position with how I'm standing now because I kind of need more leverage to push up. Now that we got a real nice line scored in here, we don't have to worry about. Go ahead. And if you're at home thinking, you know, I don't have any friends with awesome biceps that can crank <laughs> a handle at that steady of, a, of speed, we do offer a motorized yeah. uh, feed roller as well. So, but maybe I should hire myself out after that comment there. Yeah, that was good. I really can't take too much. Ruth said that he, he employs his 12-year-old son to crank it, so it doesn't take too much. Uh, it's pretty easy. Is that, are, you, are you just putting him <laughs> yeah, down? <it's> <laughs> Wow. Okay. It's, well, I'm, I'm assuming his 12, 12 year old son is he's above he's a, a prodigy. Yeah, he's, he's above average. Yeah. Yeah. Helping yeah. Out yeah. On the shop. He's yeah. He's not a typical twelve year old if he's doing what I'm doing. So what you're noted, what, what you'll see here is when I turn it like this, you can see we're getting some curve actually into the panel going that way now. And when we start doing the second pass to really get, or this next pass rather to get this to fully fold over, you're going to really see. Uh, it add that additional. So the key with this stuff is just doing multiple passes here. All right, again? Yep. So as I'm pushing this, you can actually kind of feel and see it getting, picking up that curve in the panel as we bring it up. I think this will be the last one we could probably. So right here is where you have to be careful. If you start pushing up too far to take it to 90, which is very tempting, it'll start, it'll really want to start slipping out of the die and then you start having trouble. You have all that leverage. There we go. Look at that. So it's bringing that curve up there. And I think we might try one more pass to get it to see if I can get it yeah. to go a little more. Any questions there, Scott? Nothing yeah. too crazy, but I mean, remember if you're just tuning in that this month we're doing the uh -oh. SCT as a giveaway. Yes. And, you know, we've been pretty far into the video, so we probably have new guys. So make sure you visit the website. Uh, we have this up for the month, ends at the end of the month. So make sure you get your name in there. Got a chance to win an SCT. One of our most popular, yep. popular now's, tools. Yep. Now's the time to have it with paint season coming up. Get your car stripped quick and 
prime away. All right, are yep. we going? Yep. All right, now's where we're trying to push it a little further. So now that we have this bend kind of made in this, you could hand, you know, use your hand and kind of help the bend a little bit. If you get beyond, you know, if it starts curving too much, it won't fit in the bead roller die. You know, we have that, we have it kind of the line set now, so it's kind of following. That line. Yep. Cool. We're like one doing this. We don't I even know. have to communicate. It's like we've done this a couple <laughs> times. So now you can see the curve that's picking up this way. Pretty and sweet. Then, and then you can see um, there. So, so, I mean, that could even become a patch panel for a, a fender, a, a quarter yeah. panel. I mean, yeah. we're basically trying to imitate the, uh, the dash insert that we have sitting here on the table. But you can see, I mean, just that, you know, it gives you the idea of all the possibilities yeah. you can do. Yeah, this is something, you're, you're bending it in two different planes here, so you could make, you know, a panel with uh, two different curves in it. So, like you said, if it's a wheel tub insert or something like that, you could do that. It's all... It's all in the, the, this radius that you draw on here. That's going to change this whole shape on how much it bends in the top and on the front. So it takes some practice to get something that's actually going to fit whatever you're doing. Um, you may want to do some small pieces as practice uh, ahead of time, but it's pretty cool. I mean, you can do that. Like we said, we went from just tipping, a, tipping an edge just normal to yeah. making you know, multiple shapes to pressing in a yeah. panel from that. We did first. So if you're just tuning in, you want to see some of the other dies in use, um, you'll be able to watch this recorded and you'll be able to see how we just did that earlier. So we started off with. So is, is that it? That's all okay. I got for, for little tricks today. We, we don't want to bore anybody too much, yeah. but. <laughs> anything, anything else before we get out of here, Scott? Yeah, last question is if there was any way to make louvers. And uh, we actually have a set of louver dies for this exact unit. It allowed yes. you to do it all. We, we do have a set of louver dies, and in fact, we're probably going to be doing a video on them in the next month. So stay tuned. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And um, when you subscribe, don't forget to click. There's a bell icon in the top corner. That means you'll be notified of all this stuff. So if you subscribe, um, you'll get to see the, the video on the louver dies when it comes out. And um, like I said, if you're just joining us, uh, make sure you're, uh, you can always watch this recorded. And if you're interested in any of this stuff, our bead roller here. 17-inch um, throat will do up to 18-gauge aluminum. 17-inch throat means you'll be able to do a 34-inch wide piece, so you better do all your floor pans, everything else. Comes with uh, six sets of uh, bead roller dies and flanging dies. And today what we demonstrated besides a bead roller was our bead roller forming dies, which is this right here. You get 10 of them, and it's going to allow you to do a lot of stuff like you see here on the table. You know, trans tunnels, flares, just put uh, hemmed edges, which is something else you know, we're starting to make there on the transom, we're starting to fold some edges. Um, but you can do complete hemmed edges and, um, yeah, or dash inserts. So, bead roller is a pretty cool thing. It's really handy. And if you're restoring a car, you're definitely going to need yeah, one. Yeah, need one in the shop. And um, I guess before we get out of here, don't forget to tune in every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at 3 o'clock Eastern time. And tomorrow is rust. Rust. We're going to do some rust yeah. talking about rust, how to, how to take care of it, and all the different rust solutions we have. And, when and where to use them because we seem to get Scott and his crew gets a lot of questions about that. Yep. So we'll cover it for you guys, hopefully answer a few of your questions. So save some rust questions for us. Yep. And I uh, guess we'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. Catch you guys later.